Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Just a few announcements this morning. The first one is um, actually from Betty Berg's daughter. Um, her daughter Donna Wadey said to tell everyone hi. And she asks for your prayers because she's going to be starting chemotherapy for blood cancer after a four year remission. And so if you would be in prayer for her, I know she would appreciate that very much. And then just a reminder about our trunk or treat. I'm still looking for people to um, do trunks. There's been a couple of people that donated some, some treats, and so I thank you for that. If you would like to participate in our trunk or treat, if you could um, just plan to be at the parking lot by the Cardinal Lofts there, like on the east side, um, and be ready to hand out your, your treats um, by 5 o'clock on Saturday, this coming Saturday, that would be fantastic. Uh, there's a sign up over in the City Hall office, if you would just uh, reach out to them, they can have you um, have you signed up and, and ready to go. So, uh, next we have our annual Harvest Fest and Potluck, that's going to be happening on November 13th, and so if you would please mark your calendars for that, we'd love to have you uh, join us and um, enjoy a meal together. And then I want to remind you all, um, we've been doing this for several years now, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, they're starting to get the word out about collecting items for shoebox gifts. And so if you are interested, there are some shoeboxes that you could take home today, and I believe they're out by the entrance. Um, if you would take one on your way out today. Um, they're going to be collecting those November 14th through the 21st. And so um, I believe we have probably more boxes than we need. So even if you have somebody else that you would want to tell about, um, you could grab a box for yourself or someone else and uh, pass the word along that way. And if you yourself don't want to actually pack a box, you can go to their website at SamaritansPurse.org and just look up Operation Christmas Child. It's all over their website. You can actually yourself um, electronically fill a box and send it that way. This year they also had to increase the, the cost of the shipping because everything else is going up. Um, and so it's $10 for shipping. So even if you aren't a person that likes to shop or can get out to shop, we can always take donations to help with the cost of the shipping or um, the shopping. So in any way that you would like or can be involved, we would welcome that. And then um, the last announcement I want to make is about a community event coming up. The Shelby Faith Community is uh, inviting everyone to the Presbyterian Church on Sunday, November 20th for worship and a potluck sharing feast. So put November 20th on your calendar. Um, we'll be there celebrating with them and sharing a kind of Thanksgiving potluck meal after the worship service. And uh, this will be in lieu of a Wednesday night Thanksgiving Eve service. So there will not be a community Thanksgiving Eve service. This will take the place of that. So uh, please plan to attend, and I am sure it will be a wonderful time for everyone. And that is for the whole community. So you are welcome to share that uh, with your neighbors and with your friends. So we won't have service here. no services here. No service at the Methodist Church. The only service in town that day will be at the Presbyterian Church. Thank you for clarifying that. All right. Any other announcements this morning? Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, 
praise the Lord for those physicians that knew how to do all that work. That is amazing. Um, all right, that is fantastic. Any other things you want to add today? All right, well, let's uh, just take a moment to uh, prepare our minds and our hearts for worship, if you would, and then we will continue with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess together. We confess that apart from Christ, we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll remain standing for our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Thank <laughs> you. Genesis 4, verses 1 through 15. 
Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offer of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel in his offerings, but for Cain in his offerings he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you. But you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. Please read with me responsibly from Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. I can soon cry for help, my King and my God, for I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God to take pleasure in wickedness, and you will not dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who seek lies, the bloodthirsty and deceitful, Lord, your Lord. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of those who lie and wait for me. Make your grace straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is only great. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God, let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But all who take the refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love you may exalt on you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteousness. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. The second reading is from 2 Timothy. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is the. Thank you, Rachel. Are there children that would like to come for the children's message?
How are you, Bella? You're fine? Yeah? Okay, well good. What did you learn about in Sunday school today? You can't remember. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Um, I was just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Jesus. Do you know that Jesus loves children? Yeah, you do? That's awesome. I'm glad you know that. And you know that he loves you, right? Right. He thinks you're pretty special. Yeah. He thinks all of these people are pretty special, too. Yeah. Um, so, in the Bible, we have some stories about Jesus with children. And um, God, God says that he wants his people, all these people, to be like children, too, in their in their faith, in their belief in Jesus. So I wanted to ask you, um, what is it about babies, do you think, or little, little children that Jesus likes so much? Why do you think he likes babies and like toddlers and stuff? They do? What kind of things do they do for Jesus? They do good things for them? Hmm. But what about a baby that like can't talk yet? Can can a baby do good things? Little a little tiny, tiny baby, like freshly newborn? No, probably not. Little babies can't do anything, can they? No, they can't talk. They can't feed themselves. They can't change their own diaper, right? No. So if they can't do anything like that, why would Jesus think they're so special? Hmm, I don't know. Yeah. Do you suppose... Do you suppose that Jesus maybe just likes babies because, well, first of all, because he created them, but also because he knows that they need him? Yeah, I think so. They, yeah, he knows that they need, they need Jesus. And without Jesus, or without a mom or dad to take care of a baby, um, would a baby be very able to survive if it didn't have somebody to take care of it? No. Yeah. And so Jesus wants us to be like, kind of like a baby in our need for him. And he wants us to trust in him like a baby would trust in its mom or dad or grandma or granny to, to feed and to care for it. So, God likes it when we need him, and we want him, and he likes when we worship him, and we love him, and sing to him, and all those things, right? But he also likes when we're just quiet, like, well, maybe babies aren't always that quiet, but sometimes they are. When babies just rest, in their mother's arms or in their daddy's arms. It's kind of like that. Jesus wants us to kind of rest and be um, able to just um, receive his love like a baby. But like when we get the things from our parents that we need. So he kind of wants us to be like, be like babies in a way. But he also wants us to be grown up and make good choices, right? And he wants us to do good things as well. But as far as faith is concerned, he wants us to be like children because he loves children and he loves that children love him back as well. And that um, sometimes with kids, things are a little less complicated and a little bit more straightforward and simple. So anyway, I just wanted you to think about uh, how Jesus loves you and how Jesus loves everyone. Is that okay? All right. Let's have a prayer, shall we? Okay. Lord, we thank you for loving Bella, and we thank you for loving each one of your children 
whether they are newborn infants or full-grown 80 and 90 year olds. They're all your children, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. We thank you for providing for us and giving us the things that we need to live. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus, who's given us the promise of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. We get to be forever in the safe arms of Jesus because of his love and his gift on the cross. So bless us, bless Bella today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you want to bring something back to your seat and maybe bring something for Grandma too, for Granny? She thinks she wants something chocolate. Well, there's Snicker, Mark, Milky Way, or Twix. Okay, I think she will. See, grandparents, it pays to bring your grandchildren. <laughs> All right. We're going to have some special music now um, from our ensemble. And so we're going to sing for you, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 17. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing even infants to him, that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to them, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall not enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be unto Christ. Amen. Have you ever said or done something that made you look bad or stupid? when you were trying really hard to look maybe smart or really good? Probably you have. Former President Ronald Reagan once told a story about a speech he made in Mexico City while serving as California's governor. He said, after I had finished speaking, I sat down to a rather unenthusiastic applause and I was a little embarrassed. The speaker who followed me spoke in Spanish, which I didn't understand, and he was being applauded about every paragraph. To hide my embarrassment, I started clapping before everyone else, and longer than anyone else, until our ambassador leaned over and said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. He's interpreting your speech. So embarrassing. <laughs> Wouldn't that make you just want to go hide under a rock? Man. Believe it or not, you can become prideful even of your own attempts to be humble, just like Ronald Reagan did in the story he told. Pride and humility often go together, kind of like two sides of the same coin. As soon as you think you've mastered being humble, you fall into the trap of being self-righteous. The Pharisee and the publican, or the tax collector, were both in the temple to pray. Contrary to what we may think, in those days the Pharisee was considered to be one of the good old guys. He was someone who always did what was religiously right. He followed the laws of Moses. He tithed not just the 10% of his income, but also 10% on his purchases, just to be sure that they were covered. He went over and above what was expected of him, so that no one can say that he had not done enough. Then we have the tax collector. He is everything that the Pharisee is not. He is a cheat, a fraud, an extortionist. Everyone despises him, and he knows it. When these two men come into the temple to pray, they couldn't be more different. One has relied solely on himself and his own efforts to be sinless and make himself righteous before God. The other knows he is utterly depraved and void of any righteousness whatever. 
He has done nothing to deserve God's blessing or favor. All he can do is beg for God's mercy. Maybe you know that you are a sinner, but maybe you think, well, your sins aren't so bad. You measure your sins against those of your neighbors or people you hear about on the news. But you haven't really done anything terrible, like kill someone or rob a bank or any number of other terrible things. You're not one of those people. You think, well, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. Right? That's the way the world, the world thinks. But that kind of thinking leaves God out of the picture and puts salvation back on ourselves, which is wrong. This kind of thinking totally disregards the cross and the price that Jesus paid to bring us forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Jesus clearly tells us in the Bible that he did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And believe it or not, that's good news. It means that Jesus is for robbers for evildoers, for adulterers, extortionists, and all the things that the Pharisee mentioned in his prayer. It means that sinners like you and me have a chance. Christ died for us. The tax collector knows he is a crook. He knows that he is as good as dead. He has no hope of saving himself. He's too far gone. And so he prays, God be merciful to me, a sinner. The more we allow ourselves to think like a Pharisee and downplay our own sinfulness, we start to judge others and we eventually become like a Pharisee, and pray, thank you, God, because I'm not like this guy over here. Despite our efforts to be humble, we become self-righteous, taking pride in our own humility. This, in essence, becomes false humility. Only God knows our true motivations and our true heart, which are never 100% pure. Even when we try to make ourselves more humble, that effort in itself becomes sinful. As crazy as that sounds, we cannot make ourselves more virtuous or more righteous in the eyes of God by anything that we do. Relying on yourself and your own doings is exactly the problem. Only God can make you righteous. God makes you humble. And even then, it is only by the righteousness of Christ that we are made right with God. Our parable today isn't meant just to teach us to simply be humble like the tax collector, because then we'll all just be better Christians and, and better people. It's not as simple as that. It's meant to show us who God is. Our God is the one who hears our cries for mercy and help and gives forgiveness. We expect that religious do-gooders like the Pharisee and us good Christian folks will get into heaven because we always say and do the right thing. <laughs> no. We expect that sinners will go to hell for being bad and living immoral lives. 
because that's the way our world operates. That's not the way it actually works. God loves sinners. And he loves righteous men as well. But he wants us, as I said in the children's sermon, to be like babies, like infants, totally helpless and relying solely on Christ for all things, especially for our righteousness before God. He wants us to be dependent on him and dependent on Jesus' death. Christ was crucified, died, and was buried for both the Pharisee and the tax collector and everyone in between. Christ died for you and for me. And he rose again to give us the victory over sin and death. In your baptism, you, sinner, were put to death. There is no other way to get right with God than to die to sin and to be raised up with Christ to live a new life. And you have received that in baptism. In Jesus' death and resurrection, you are justified, made righteous by the precious blood of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. You are a child of God. His grace and mercy are sufficient for you. When you stand at the foot of the cross, looking up at your Savior Jesus, that's what true humility looks like. Worship. It's there that we see ourselves reflected in the eyes of our Savior, in Jesus Christ, to whom we give all the glory and honor and praise. In his name, amen. Our response hymn today is Just As I Am.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go now to God in prayer. Forgive the faults of your people, O Lord, that our slavery to sin in which we fell and our weakness may be overcome by your liberating work through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God. Eternal and living Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and truth. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. And may it be a bold proclamation to the world that all who do not know in your victory over death may come to know the salvation through your Son, Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. You bring forth bread from the earth. You have graciously brought us to another season of harvest. We ask that you would be with farmers and agricultural workers in these days. Keep them safe in their work and in the use of their machines, and keep your watchful eye upon them as they work to serve the needs of many. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal, righteous one, as you see the turmoil among nations and in our world, we ask that you would turn our hearts from bitterness, wrath, slander, and malice. Enter all places of warfare and violence with your peace. And when the battle rages within our own hearts, we ask that you would grant us that peace which the world cannot give. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, as you brought healing and wholeness to those in infirmity, we pray for your healing strength to be at work among those who suffer from physical disabilities and special needs. Guide your people in mercy, that none may be deprived of the opportunity to share the blessings you so generously provide. Lord, bring healing and strength to those who are on our prayer list. We especially remember today Lois Albers, Joni Eggers, Brian Caster, Larry and Lucy Schlenzig, Sharon Wharton, Keith Peterson, Mary Jane Peterson, Bennett Seek, Maxine Sick, Catherine Toms, Bob Toms, Michelle Jacobson, Bern Hantock, Marion Eckman, Connie Darrington, Kathleen Petty, Donna, Dan, Holly, Curon, and also the family of Doug Wager as they mourn his passing. Lord, give strength and courage to all these dear ones. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to say thank you to all who have uh, given an offering today. There are offering plates there at the entrance of our sanctuary. If you still would like to leave something for the work and the ministry of our congregation. And also would like to say thanks to those who uh, give their tithes and offerings online through our website. Um, you can find our website at unitedlutheranshelby.org if you would like to go there and leave a gift we thank you for those as well. Let's pray. 
Benevolent God, you have granted us in abundance with all the good things that life has to offer. May we be truly grateful for our daily bread, even as we return a portion of what you have first given us as a sign of our humility and thanksgiving with your bounteous gifts. Let the treasures we have received from you be used to serve the world that you love. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn, Give to Our God Immortal Praise. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.